Hey, how's it going guys? So we're back for another Sith history video. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. So in this video, it's going to be uh, just off the top of my... Uh, well, I don't know why I said my... Off the top of the video title, it says the rogue Jedi group who stomped the Brotherhood of Darkness and saved the Republic. So it looks like uh, it's going to be like another splinter uh, group of Jedi that like uh, disobeys probably the Council's orders and do their own thing, just like how Darth Revan and Malak did. So what I see in a lot... Uh, like a pattern on the Jedi side is the council keeps on saying like no but there's always going to be like a small group uh, who will like splinter off or branch off and like uh, do their own thing and follow their own orders but that eventually leads them to like a dark path so what I'm thinking is the rogue Jedi group could go either two ways one they will accomplish what they did but they will fall to the dark side in the progress or two they're going to uh, like accomplish uh, what the council said not to do but they're gonna still like uh, be part of the light side like they're not gonna be corrupted by the dark that's what I'm thinking but then again those are just theories so I'm really excited to see what happens and also I did like a little research so after this video there is one more uh, Sith history video but I cannot find more after that so it looks like uh, this two videos including this one will be last for the Sith history but after that we're gonna move on to a new set of videos uh, which I'm sure you guys will enjoy as well because I'm really looking forward to seeing them too. So without anything else, let's get into it. In our last video on the history of the Sith, we told the first part of the story of the new Sith Wars, a chaotic millennium of Sith history in which the fractitious oh, new eye. Sith slowly whittled away the strength of the Republic and the Jedi. After their formation under Darth Ruin, the new Sith battled the Republic for 900 years, ultimately culminating in the century-long Republic Dark Age in which the galactic government all but ceased to exist. But the new Sith were unable to take advantage of this, for they were too busy fighting themselves, squabbling over the title of Dark Lord of the Sith. For Power 90 vacuum. years, most of the galaxy was left to its own devices, with neither the Republic nor the Sith in a position to lay claim to them. But when we left off, that was about to change. In this video, We'll be telling the last chapter in the history of the new Sith Wars, that of the Brotherhood of Darkness and the rise of Darth Bane. Oh, Darth Bane! Hey, I know what Darth Bane is famous for, the rule of two. And I'm pretty sure that's the title of the next Sith History video. As we mentioned in the last video, the chaos of the Republic Dark Age led to the Jedi taking a more active role in galactic governance. Since 1400 BBY, the position of Supreme Chancellor had been exclusively held by Jedi, as the Order was pretty much the only thing propping the crumbling Republic up. Meanwhile, out in the regions where the Republic That's a lot of no power for the Jedi. Existed, Jedi Watchmen assumed rule of systems and sectors, becoming Jedi Lords. They and their heirs kept their territories safe from Sith and pirates, and much of the galaxy saw them as noble heroes the only ones standing between the bloodthirsty Sith Warlords and billions of innocent people. But not everyone liked the Jedi Lords. The Jedi Council certainly didn't. They were concerned with how the Lords tended to of play course. fast and loose with Jedi doctrine and with how they were essentially feudal Lords. To make matters worse, many of their own students started idolizing some of the Lords, such as Lord Hoth, who was a legend for his campaigns against the Sith in the Outer Rim. Thus, the Jedi sought their own champion to take command of the fight against the Sith, and for this task, they chose the newly promoted Jedi Master Skere Khan. This choice was ill-advised. Not long after he was dispatched to join the fight against the Sith, Khan fell to the dark side himself. He, like many other oh, Sith damn. warlords at the time, claimed the title of Dark Lord of the Sith, and he converted most of the Jedi the Council had sent with him on his campaign. At first, Khan claimed to the Council that he was making a bid for control of the Sith so as to contain their threat. And the Council, which didn't want to believe that they had messed up so badly, believed this at first. They even sent formal congratulations to Khan as he and his followers won campaign after campaign against rival Sith Lords, destroying some of the worst warlords and usurping control of their armies. Man, By the time the Council her. saw sense, it was too late. Khan was got Darth well Maul. on his way to reuniting the new Sith. He gathered the Sith under the banner of the Brotherhood of Darkness, 
And by the end of 1010 Yo, that's a pretty, BBY, that's a cool picture he had right successfully there. recruited or destroyed all of the other Sith factions. To unite the Sith, however, Khan made some radical ideological sacrifices. He built his brotherhood on recognizing others' claims to the title of Dark Lord of the Sith, proclaiming that all Dark Lords would be equal in the Brotherhood of Darkness. Though Khan's vision of the Sith philosophy, what he called rule by the strong, adhered to the usual might makes right ideology of the Sith, Khan contended that strength and power were eroded by constant infighting and that a degree of unity and equality were required for the strongest in the galaxy to maintain their power. This flew in the face of some of the core precepts of Sith ideology, and it meant that the Brotherhood worked a lot differently from prior Sith orders. The Brotherhood of Darkness was led by a Sith Council of 16 Dark Lords of the Sith, all of them nominally equal. Lord Khan, of course, was somewhat of a first among equals, but other Dark Lords with considerable power included Lord Cordis, Lord Kasim, Lord Kopesh, and Sevis Var. Each of them controlled their own factions of the Brotherhood, and below each of them were numerous Sith Lords, the best and brightest Force Adepts in Khan's armies. The Brotherhood's Sith Lords included Borthis, Hezoran, Shenayag, and Orultha, and they were all trained at Cordis's rebuilt Sith Academy on Korriban. Khan encouraged his Sith Lords to amass their own armies and conquer worlds in the name of the Brotherhood, but he forbade all of them from using the title of Darth, which he blamed for much of the Sith's infighting and disunity. Below the Sith Lords were several orders of lesser Sith, each trained at academies across the Brotherhood. Less skilled Sith adepts and apprentices were trained on Dathomir or Iridonia and served the Sith Lords directly, oh, while Sith assassins wow. and spies trained on Ryloth, Umbara, and Nashada served them more discreetly hunting down Jedi to kill or capture. There were also Sith warriors and marauders who were trained on Gentis, Gamor, and Honiga, and were tasked with leading the regular armies of the Brotherhood into battle. Like the Jedi Lords and the Republic, Khan's Sith controlled vast armies of non-Force sensitives who served at the bottom of the Brotherhood's hierarchy. All told, Khan's Brotherhood of Darkness functioned less like a Sith Empire and more like, as Darth Bane put it, a twisted perversion of the Jedi Order. Unfortunately for the Jedi, yeah, there the similar Sithiness of the Brotherhood made that. it a far greater threat than any new Sith faction before it. From their capital on Rune, they conquered vast swaths of the Rim, amassing an army of 20,000 Sith to topple the Republic with. Fortunately for the galaxy, however, the Jedi wouldn't let Khan win without a fight. To challenge the Brotherhood of Darkness, Lord Hoth rallied the forces of Jedi Lords, forming the Army of the Light. He and his followers fought a 10-year war with the Brotherhood of Darkness, during which the Jedi won several major victories. At first, the Brotherhood had a decisive advantage. After retaking Korriban, they won battles at Enarch, Ando, Monastery, Jabim, and Dorin. But Hoth's tactical genius allowed the Jedi to best the Brotherhood at Hoth, Dramund Kaas and Malrev IV, denying the Sith control of some of their ancient strongholds. The Sith responded with an offensive against what was left of the Republic. The Brotherhood won battles all over the galaxy, crushing Republic forces on Kashyyyk, Trandosha, Fasira, Alaris Prime, Bespin, Salas, Tanab, and Harpori. By 1002 BBY, they were able to push far into Republic space, hitting Mindor and Castell. But the Army of the Light didn't fall into Khan's trap. Jedi loyal to the High Council rallied Republic forces and fended off the Sith at Burmese Kori, Pax, Denon, Druckenwell, and Corson. The Army of Light Damn, kept a, lot a of constant worlds. offensive against the Brotherhood, continuing to attack targets within their territory. Ord Mantell, Sanraf VI, Sai Mirth, and even Rune itself, the Brotherhood capital, fell to Hoth's allies, who also prevented incursions into Republic space at Geyser, Gindin and Ambria. Over several grueling years of war, the Brotherhood and the Army of Light wore each other out, fighting to a draw in the grand scheme of things. Khan preached that victory was just so around stalemate. the corner, but in truth, Hoth was whittling away the strength of the Brotherhood, and not even Khan's battle meditation could stop the Army of Light. In 1002 BBY, 
faced with the eventual Man, someone's got a battle me a meditation always on one side. On, Khan switched tactics, <clears throat> attempting one final assault on the Republic, hoping to finish it off and thus destroy Hoth's base of support. To this end, the Brotherhood conquered the obscure midrim planet Rusan to use as a base of operations, planning to advance from Rusan through the slice to the core worlds. The Republic tried to take Rusan back, but Khan and his followers easily drove them off. Trusting that Rusan was secure, Khan set off on a campaign in the Core Worlds where he captured Brentsul IV, bringing the Brotherhood within reach of Coruscant. But then, the Army of Light made an unexpected move. The Jedi attacked Rusan and liberated it. Unwilling to let Rusan go, Khan counterattacked and won another victory on the planet with the help of the turncoat Jedi, Githany only to lose two further battles against Lord Hoth. As this Rusan campaign escalated, both the Army of Lights and the Brotherhood of Darkness committed more and more of their forces to it, unwilling to surrender what had become a vital mustering point. By a thousand BBY, Khan and Hoth had summoned all of their followers to Rusan, each desperate to annihilate the other. Rusan had gone from being a mere mustering ground to the site of the last confrontation between the Brotherhood and the army. As he committed fully to taking Rusan and crushing Hoth, Lord Khan summoned every single Sith Lord to his camp on the planet, just as Hoth and the Jedi Lords Man. were doing with their own followers. Among the Sith Lords who heeded this call was a recent graduate from the Korriban Academy, a man who called himself Darth Bane. After studying the history of the Sith Darth and Bane. the teachings of Darth Revan, Bane had come to despise Lord Khan and the Brotherhood which he saw as perversions of the Sith teachings. After killing Lord Kas Im on Rakata Prime, he came to Rusan hoping to guide the Sith back to what he saw as the true path. Lord Khan, understanding the threat Bane posed, tried to have several of his Sith Lords kill him, but Bane survived all these assassination attempts. Instead of wow. challenging Khan over them, however, Bane offered him a truce in the form of two ancient force techniques he had learned from Revan's holocron. He proposed the Sith employ the first, a telekinetic wave, in the next battle with the Jedi, and Khan acquiesced, allowing Bane to lead the assembled Sith Lords in forming a meditation circle. In the seventh battle of Rusan, under Bane's guidance, the Sith pulled their strength and unleashed the raw power of the dark side upon the army of light, devastating Hoth's forces. But Khan was concerned that Bane would win control of the Brotherhood if his strategy won the Sith the battle, so he broke the circle early, urging the Sith to take their speeder bikes and pursue the retreating Jedi. The rest of the Brotherhood followed him, routing the Jedi army and killing several of their best. But this was a catastrophic mistake. During the rout, the Jedi received reinforcements in the form of Lord Valentine Fafala and 300 additional Jedi Knights who annihilated Khan's armies forcing the remaining Sith Lords to retreat deep into Rusan's valleys. This tactical blunder pretty much handed Damn. Rusan to the Jedi, destroying the Brotherhood's armies and killing many of Khan's greatest Sith Lords. Unable to cope with the massive L he had just taken, Lord Khan started to <laughs> massive go insane, L. Yep, which Darth he took Bane an L. exploited to his own ends. Bane convinced Khan to try out the other technique he had learned from Revan, the Thought Bomb, a dark side ritual that absorbed the souls of all within the blast radius, imprisoning them in an obelisk of force energy. Believing Whoa. that he and his followers were strong enough to survive such a blast if they worked together, Khan prepared a thought bomb deep in Rusan's caves, while what was left of his army waited on the surface, setting a trap for the Jedi. Upon learning of Khan's plans, Lord Hoth set out to stop the mad Dark Lord, but with a clap of his hands, Khan detonated the thought bomb and he, Hoth, and everyone else in a wide radius was killed. So ended the seventh battle of Rusan, the Brotherhood Damn. of Darkness, and the new Sith as a whole. Khan had gathered all of his Sith Lords, together with the vast majority of his lesser Sith on Rusan, and the Thought Bomb consumed them all. All that remained of the Sith after Rusan were the Brotherhood's non-Force sensitive armies, which promptly surrendered, and a few Acolytes, Dark Jedi, and Assassins with the Jedi wiped out in short order. After a thousand years of war, the Sith Lords had finally been wiped out, or so the galaxy believed. A single Sith Lord survived the seventh battle of Rusan, Darth Bane. Claiming the title Darth of Bane. Dark Lord of the Sith, 
he established the rule of two, which would govern his new order of the Sith Lords. Hoping to avoid the mistakes and of the, the next Sith video. and the constant self-destruction the Sith had shown all throughout their history, he decreed that, going forward, there would only ever be two Sith Lords. A master to embody the power, and an apprentice to crave it. On the battlefield of Rusan, he recruited a young girl named Xana to be his apprentice, and in secret, the two of them kept the teachings of the Sith alive. But that's a story for another time. Alright, so that was another video of Sith history, another great video as usual, and oh, uh, I mean, like I said, basically, uh, I had a feeling it was going to go in this direction when they talked about the Jedi Lords, and uh, basically what I theorized was that since one Jedi had, each Jedi had like a control of the sector, it kind of reminded me of like the Sith Kingdoms in like the previous videos. So that's why I kept on thinking like if one has definitely need to, one is definitely going to fall to the dark side. But actually in a way it proved me wrong. They didn't really fall to the dark side, it was just one Jedi Master who basically went against the council and uh, was corrupted and formed uh, his own like Sith Empire. But what I noticed like uh like right before uh he uh Geet, uh Geetsley, uh Geetsley. <laughs> oh my god I'm really bad with names uh right before the narrator uh, like uh, mentioned it when uh he mentioned that how uh he like created a Sith uh Sith uh, like council like a uh, like a Jedi council it really did represent a uh like kind of like a dark version of the Jedi council and the Jedi order in, in a way but Everything in here was really like used from like the old Republic game and basically all the graphics and everything. But they used a lot of like Empire. Uh, and when I mean Empire, I don't mean like Sith Empire. I'm talking about like episodes 4 through 6, like the Palpatine's Empire. But either way, th this was a really great video. And I like how he ended it with Darth Bane because the next video is about the rule of two. So I already knew where it was going. But that would kind of explain why... Uh, next video would be the last one because the rule of two pretty much like just went on into like uh, the movies that we saw the prequels and the sequels and everything so basically i guess this would be where it would just like end the entire thing like the sith armies and uh, all of that so it would make sense why that would be the last uh, video but anyways i really enjoyed this one and i'm really looking forward to watching the next one which unfortunately would uh, end this star wars the old republic uh, sith history videos but hey we'll just find more uh, videos but i already have more videos to like watch after uh the next video so keep an eye out for that one so anyways thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed my reaction to this video because i really enjoyed watching it as always keep an eye out for more content and also check out my other other videos i have on my channel and again thank you guys so much for your continued support in this channel i really do appreciate it and i hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you guys are and i'll see you guys next time